Hey, Miss Me Learn again. Hi. So, welcome to another Question Corner video. Yay! It's been a little while since I've done one of these. Or at least it feels like it's been a little while. I don't know if it really has. <laughs> um, but this is Question Corner number 32. I still can't believe I'm in the 30s with these. Um, and this is one that I wanted to do, but I've sort of been procrastinating it because I've been waiting. Um, to get bills so I can do it, but then I realized like I keep everything. I keep, I have like this one is from like my current apartment to have all my bills and stuff, and this one I have other folders of stuff, bills and stuff that I keep from like other apartments too that I've lived in here. So, like, why am I waiting to do this? Like when I already have all of the stuff that I need to show you. Um, so this question corner video is from um, Deedle Dre. Not entirely sure if I said that right, but Deedle Dre, and they asked me, how do utilities and bills work? I imagine all the forms are in Japanese, so do they have someone help you set up everything at first? So, yeah. <laughs> as far as living in, like, uh, Elio Palace goes, or literally my current apartment, too. I guess whatever apartment company that you go through, whatever realtor company you go through, they will help you set up your utilities and stuff, before, hopefully before you move in, but they'll definitely help you after you move in as well. Um, they, they can help you with the forms and stuff, and honestly, you're a foreigner, so if they see that you're clearly not Japanese, they will stop and explain every point to you in very simple Japanese, or they can find somebody that speaks English, like when I set up my internet here, I had to do that by myself. I mean, my building was internet capable, and my realtor company was able to tell me that, you know, it is capable of having the internet. You just have to contact an internet provider, um, internet service provider. And uh, so I did, but they, I went through NTT Flets, but they have like a whole English phone line, and basically you call up the English phone line, and this like woman acts as like a translator for you with like, the normal Japanese agent, so it's really cool and really, it was really simple, like, for her to be able to explain to me exactly what is going on, exactly what the forms are, exactly what I needed to do in English, it was really, really useful. Um, and same thing, with, I, I use SoftBank, and SoftBank used to be part of Vodafone, it might still be part of Vodafone, I don't know, but Vodafone is like a, a British cell phone company. Um, I actually used when I was studying abroad in Scotland, um, but because of that, maybe they're a little bit more internationally, I guess. Like, I'll show you here. Here, here, here. This is, a, I've, I've blacked out my address and stuff, but this is like an actual bill from SoftBank, and you don't really, can't really notice so much on the front. This is the inside, but here, on this page, you can see that it's actually bilingual. Like, there's English and Japanese information there. Um, it's somewhat recent. Like, when I first started getting stuff from SoftBank, there was some English information, but it was more like, you know, this is, you know, how much we're going to charge you kind of information, but it wasn't so much, like, so translated, with every, every, everything being translated, which is really nice. I mean, the majority of it is still, vast majority of it is still Japanese, but just even just that little bit is really, really useful. Um, and they also do have people who speak English. Like when I had to change my address, um, the guy at the counter at SoftBank like refused to understand my Japanese, and um, so I had to call. He called like the English speaking person that they have, and I was able to communicate that way. Um, most large companies will have at least like an English speaking person to help you out. Uh, but really, as far as like your gas company goes, your electric company goes, you don't even you you're just sort of stuck with whatever local company they normally provide service to that apartment. So it's really it's sort of simple, I guess, for your realtor company to set that up. Um, Leo Palace will definitely help you set that up. Um, and when you move out of Leo Palace, um, you like they'll set it up so that. Your, all you, your utility company people come on this, the day that you're moving out, so you have to pay them whatever's left over for the month, generally in cash, and 
then they leave, they shut off the gas or whatever and they leave. Um, when you do move into an apartment, you do have to be there for when the um, gas guy comes. Because he has to go in and turn it on and make sure that it works. Like he'll turn the hot water on and make sure it works in the sink. And sometimes give you like a lecture about not leaving the gas on and stuff like that. Which is all totally obvious information. But I wouldn't worry about it too much, really. Um, as far as what other bills look like or how you pay for them, it really depends. Like my soft bank, I pay for my cell phone. It comes out of my account, my bank account, automatically every month. Um, which is pretty sweet. <laughs> So I don't even have to think about it, it just happens. Um, and it's the same thing for my, uh, my gas. I had to set that up, I had to fill out a form. Um, but that wasn't really that difficult. But it, that comes out automatically as well. So this is what this looks like. So every month I get like this like receipt looking thing like in my mailbox. And it just says how much they're going to charge me. Um, even if they didn't, even if I did still have to go and pay for this, um, myself, like I, it, I would still get this receipt thing prior to getting the actual bill, because the guy, the gas guy comes and checks how much gas you've used, and then he'll put the receipt in there. So you do know in advance how much you're going to be paying for the your gas bill at least, and your water bill sometimes too. Um, and how you pay for things also depends on the company. Some companies prefer that you pay it by automatic bank transfer. Some prefer that you actually pay it. Um, in person. So how do you pay for bills? Well, one uh, is automatic bank transfer, where they just take money out of your bank account every month. Uh, the most common way, though, is that you actually go and pay for it at the Combini. Uh, there's no picture of the Combini, so you can pay for this say, on this one. But um, here's an example of one. This is one of my electric bills. This is from Kepco. So if you live in Western Japan, um, this is your electric company, <laughs> and your bills will look like this. I've left out my address again. Um, but yeah, you see these stamps here, these are from the Combini. Generally they keep this bigger half, I don't know why they gave it back to me. Um, but they give you this one and you can keep this and um, it just they stamp it and stamp it and you pay for it in cash at the Combini. Like they have like a little, there's like a barcode somewhere, maybe not on this particular paper. There's like another paper that they rip off. Um, but on that paper they, they just like scan it, like they scan like a normal food item and then you can pay for your bill in cash. Um, and that works for the vast majority of your bills. Um, rare occasions that are, there are some that you have to actually go to the um, bank to pay. Like sometimes like your health insurance or other things. Like now my health insurance, my national health insurance is taken out of my bank account automatically, thank God, because they don't allow, at least in the city that I live in, they don't allow me to go pay for that at a convenience store. I had to go, I have to go to my bank, which is, happens to be the post office, and they, <laughs> I have to pay for it there, which is really annoying, because like every other post office and bank, they're not really open like during normal people hours. They're open from like 9 to 5 or whatever. But I work from 9 to 6, so I can't go there, you know what I mean? So it's really frustrating if that's the case. But hopefully, there's usually an option to set up automatic bank transfer. And I, I don't know, I, just, I really just wouldn't worry about it too much. But this is generally what you'll get back from if you pay for something at the Comini. Um, this is another electric bill, but it would look the, basically the same sort of size paper with a little stamp on it. This one was from Sanks. The other one... I don't know, maybe 7-Eleven? I don't know. <laughs> or Lawson. I think maybe Lawson. But anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll look like this tiny little paper. And this is my water bill. If you can see that it's kind of like a receipt. Um, my water bill also comes out via automatic bank transfer. I don't think with this particular water company I have an option to pay it any other way. <laughs> um, I, it was never, I've never got anything in the mail, it's just part of my um, apartment contract that it comes out of my bank account every month, but um, with my previous apartment I had to pay for that um, at the Combini, so it totally depends. But generally, generally your water bill comes like once every two months, it comes like definitely like bi-monthly. So, yeah, so you won't be getting that every month, usually. 
Um, it might be different in your city, but in the, the two cities that I've lived in in Japan, it was bi-monthly. But I mean, I don't know what it's like in every city, obviously. So, yeah. But yeah, the, it definitely it looks like a little silly little receipt that you get in there. And sometimes they kind of get stuck in the mailbox on your door, so def definitely like check to make sure that it's not stuck in there or something. Um, but yeah, so you can pay for them at the konbini. It's really, really, really easy. You just hand them your paper, your, your bill, they scan it, it comes up on like the normal price thing. You have, to, you have to push like a green button to say that you accept it and that you want to you want to pay for it. But other than that, it's just normal, like you're buying bananas or whatever <laughs> at the konbini. Like it's totally normal. Um, or you might have to pay for it at your bank or you might have to do, do it via bank transfer. But it's really not that difficult. And as far as setting it up, it shouldn't really be in your hands, except if it's internet. And if you don't live in Aaliyah Palace and you want internet, that's up to you to set up. But if you, there, if you use like a big like internet company, they will have like a person who speaks English. Um, as far as setting up your cell phone company, that will also be on you, but if it's a big company, they'll be able to find somebody who speaks English. Like when I set up my cell phone when I first came here, I really had very little speaking practice speaking Japanese, so it was really difficult for me, but um, they were able to find a guy somewhere at some, he was like working at some other soft bank and they called him over to the one that I was at and he had studied in Australia or something for a year so he knew enough English to be able to help me and my, my friends that went there with me and get cell phones which was really really useful um, so don't worry too too much it is daunting it really is daunting but after a little while you don't really think about it it's sort of normal and easy it's just a normal part of life um, so don't get too worked up about it and I hope that I've explained it well enough and in enough detail that it makes sense. <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any other questions or comments for the question corner, please put them in the comments below and I will try to get back to you either in the comments or if you're lucky, I'll make a video. <laughs> Alright, see you guys next week. Bye bye!